In this topic, we are writing a chemical equation from a description of the reaction. So here they give us a written description of this reaction. And it says, aqueous iron 3 chloride reacts with solid magnesium to produce aqueous magnesium chloride and solid iron. Write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. So this brings together even things from previous chapters in chemistry. The naming of ionic compounds is one, and how to derive the chemical formula of an ionic compound from its name. And also, uh, this different states of matter. We have solid magnesium and this aqueous. How do we represent that we have a substance dissolved in water? So there are many different things being brought together for this particular topic. The first thing we need to do is identify what our reactants and what our products are. So what are our reactants? The things going into this reaction. Well, it looks like our reactants are iron, three chloride, and solid magnesium. And that should be a capital M. Its element symbol is Mg. What are our products in this reaction? Well, our products, it says we produce aqueous magnesium chloride. So we haven't gotten the chemical formula yet. So we'll just put aqueous magnesium chloride. And we also produce solid iron. And the element symbol for iron is Fe. So we've determined what our reactants and our products are. Why did we have to do that? Well, when we write our chemical equation, remember your reactants are to the left of the yield arrow or yield sign and their products are to the right. So that's our first step. Next, we need to make sure that we can write the chemical formula for each reactant and product for each substance involved in this reaction. We need those chemical formulas to then place into the chemical equation. So let's look at our reactants first. It says we have iron three chloride, aqueous iron three chloride. Well, how do I derive its chemical formula? Well, what is iron three chloride comprised of? An iron three cation and a chloride anion. So just as a review, if I break it into its ions, constituent ions, we have iron three plus, and chloride minus one, I can use the crisscross method to determine what the subscripts would be. So we have Fe Cl3. And I again I just use the crisscross method to determine that. The value here is the subscript there. The value here is the subscript here. And that's a previous uh, Alex topic, naming ionic compounds. So we have iron three chloride, but we're not done because they tell us that it is aqueous iron three chloride. So how do I uh, represent that, that it's dissolved in water? I put an AQ here as the subscript in parentheses. Okay. Well, we also have solid magnesium. What's the chemical formula for solid magnesium? It's just going to be MgS, solid magnesium. Okay, let's take a look at our products. Let's find those chemical formula. We have aqueous magnesium chloride, another ionic compound. Magnesium chloride, all right? Magnesium as an ion. It's a group 2A metal, an invariant metal, so it's likely to form an ion with a 2 plus charge. Chloride, again, is an anion with a negative 1 charge. Let's use the crisscross method. So this ends up giving me a chemical formula of MgCl2. And that makes sense. This is a neutral compound, as is this. 
the charge of the anion and cation must cancel each other out. So I need two of these for every one of these, two of these for every one of those. Same case here, I need three of these with a negative one charge for every one of these with a positive free charge to make a neutrally charged compound. So the chemical formula for aqueous magnesium chloride will be MgCl2, it's aqueous, so Aq. Solid iron, Fe, solid. Now I have the chemical formula for every single one of my substances. The last step, let's build the chemical equation and then balance it. Our reactants again, we have aqueous, iron three chloride. We have its chemical formula, Fe, Cl3, aqueous. We're gonna separate each substance that is a reactant with a plus sign. So our next reactant is solid magnesium and we have its chemical formula. There it is. Now we're done with all of our reactants. So let's place our yield arrow and then write the chemical formula of our products. Our first product to produce aqueous magnesium chloride. Here's our chemical formula, aqueous dissolved magnesium chloride dissolved in water. Our next product, we're gonna separate these substances out of products with also plus signs. Uh, not only do we produce aqueous magnesium chloride, but also solid iron. So Fe, S. We're almost done. The last thing we need to do is make sure that this equation is balanced, and if it is not, we need to balance it. So to balance, we uh, isolate and determine the kind of atoms present and then see if the number of those atoms are the same on both sides. So what kind of atoms are present? Iron atoms, chlorine atoms, magnesium as well. I see iron, chlorine, magnesium. And it should be the same on both sides, but we could double check. Again, I see iron, chlorine, and magnesium. So what's the initial count the initial count of iron atoms on the left, one. On the right, one. All right, iron looks good. What's the initial count of chlorine atoms on the left? Three. On the right, two. Uh-oh. Let's check magnesium. On the left, one. On the right, one. So everything seems to be balanced of the chlorine. So if I look at these numbers, I have three chlorine atoms on the left and two on the right. I can ask myself, what number, uh, what's the, the smallest number that three and two have in common? What's that next common value that three and two have? Well, that would be six. So what you can do is you can make the total of chlorine atoms on the right side six by changing the coefficient and then make the total number of chlorine atoms on the left side six by changing that coefficient and then seeing where you are. But we need to get these two to be the same and then go from there. So we're doing it different this time. We may have used a fractional uh, coefficient as well if you would like to use that method. But let's do it this way. How can I make both of these a six? Well, if chlorine is here, and I need this to be 6, what's the coefficient that I need to place here? I need to place a 3. If chlorine on the reactant side is here, and I need the total number of chlorine atoms to be 6, what's the coefficient I need to place there? I need to place a 2. So now that I've placed my coefficients, let's stop and recalculate. So if I look at chlorine atoms on the left side. Now I have a total of six chlorine atoms, but I've also changed the number of iron atoms. I have two now. Let's look at the right side. I also changed the coefficient there, so let's recalculate. Now I have a total of three magnesium atoms 
and six chlorine atoms. So I managed to balance chlorine, but now I have thrown magnesium and iron out of whack. But notice, it'll be much easier to balance the magnesium and the iron on both sides because here I just have pure element of, of magnesium and iron. I can change the coefficient and it won't affect anything else. So if I have two iron atoms on the left and only one on the right, how can I make this one a two? Placing a two there as the coefficient. And let's write that in red. So now I have changed the coefficient. Let's recalculate. That is a two. And the only thing left unbalanced is magnesium. I have three magnesium atoms on the right and only one on the left. Well, I can make this a three by changing the coefficient. Once you change the coefficient, you stop recalculate. I can see now that the number of iron, chlorine, and magnesium atoms are all balanced with my new coefficients. So my balanced chemical equation for this reaction would be that. Now let's see if it matches the description of the reaction. The reaction said aqueous iron three chloride reacts with solid magnesium to produce aqueous magnesium chloride and solid iron. If I read this chemical equation, here's how it will sound. Aqueous iron three chloride and or reacts with solid magnesium to produce aqueous magnesium chloride and solid iron. That sounds exactly like the description we were given. But please note that if you were doing this on your own and if you did not get the same coefficients I got, one of your sources of error would uh, be your chemical formula. It's very, very, very important that the chemical formula that, that we uh, derive from the written description of the substances is correct or are correct because if the chemical formula are not correct what it will end up impacting is the coefficient here for each substance so we need to make sure that uh, this is a three instead of a two or that this is a two instead of a one or that these are ones instead of twos because if not it'll also affect how we balance the chemical equation